What's up guys? This video is going to be about how to receive true salvation. And I'm doing this video because there's many people who have been deceived into thinking that saying the sinner's prayer is enough to get them saved, which it is not. Some people think that just believing in Jesus is enough to get you saved, but there's way more to it than just believing in Him. Okay, believing in Him and having faith in Him is the foundation of salvation. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and you continue in willful sin, you are in danger. Your soul is in danger of being eternally separated from God and going to hell. That's literally what the Bible says. I mean, I'm going to show you scriptures because so many people like to use, you know, John 3.16 or Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's much more to it. Okay, of course, Jesus said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay, now let's look at what it really means to be saved, because First John chapter 3, verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, guys. Okay, in Mark, if you have a red letter Bible, the first thing that Jesus says, or one in the first sentence, he says, repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay, if you have a red letter Bible, find the first red sentence. And at the end of that sentence, Jesus says, repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay, why would Jesus say that? Jesus also said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. In John, let me find that scripture, John 14, 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. Now let's look at what it really takes to really be saved. Because Jesus says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Guys, you must be born again. Okay? He goes on to say in verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Guys, we are born into the flesh, okay? This is common sense. It's very obvious when you look at yourself. We live in the flesh, okay? You need to understand that for the wages of sin is death, okay? We live in a world where people believe that sin is just a part of our human nature. Sin nature. That is a false doctrine, my friends. That is a false doctrine because it is very easy to remove sin out of your life. Matter of fact, it should take no longer than a month when you fully understand what Jesus did for you. Okay, but it starts with understanding what Jesus did for you. Because it's very clear that yeah, everybody knows Jesus died for our sins, guys. For by grace are ye saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2.8 Guys, it starts with having faith that Jesus took the penalty for you. As it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the price, as it, as it clarifies in, in verse 11. Um... And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Jesus Christ was a propitiation for our sins, as it says in 1 John, guys. We need to understand that Jesus Christ already took the penalty. Your sins have been paid for. We are bought with a price. And all we have to do is confess our sins, and He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, as it says in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, guys. But remember, repent, okay? Like it says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't call out to the Lord if you don't think you need to be saved. You call out to Him because you know you need to be saved. You know you're a sinner. You know you will not enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are cleansed by His precious blood that He shed for us. He took that brutal death because he was paying the price for us. Paying the price for our wickedness. Guys, all it takes is believing in him. 
Now, like I said, that's the foundation, okay? Because having faith in Him and believing in Him, it's the very first step. It's the foundation to salvation, guys. But it's not enough, like I said, okay? So many preachers just like to, just to tell you that pray this prayer and you're saved. No, my friends, no, that is not the case. Do not believe that. You need to seek out your salvation with fear and trembling, as it says in Philippians, okay? And what that means is you need to seek what else the Bible says, okay? Because, of course, yes, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. Whosoever believes in the Son shall be saved, okay? And not perish, but what else does Jesus say? Let me show you. Like it says, we must be born again. Okay? We must be born of water and of spirit. Because what that means is baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're really accepting Jesus Christ into your life. You receive the Holy Spirit being baptized in water. You need to truly understand what that means. Okay? Because it explains it in Romans chapter 6. Let me just jump over there real quick. Romans chapter 6 there says... In 6 verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See, when you are baptized, it's representing the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For we die to our old selves and we are brought up a new creation. It says, Behold, all things are become new. It also talks about a renewing of the mind. Guys, believing in Jesus Christ and accepting him to your life is the first step into a new life. Okay? That does not mean you go back to sin. You go back to being the same old, same old. No, that's not how it works, guys. That's how people get deceived. So, so scary, guys. This is not something that needs to be taken lightly, guys. This is a, a lifestyle. This is proof that God is real. You look at people who really got saved, their lives completely changed. My life completely changed. That's how you know somebody is saved. That's how you can see somebody's fruit. Like, okay, they were this person before, and okay, now they're, now they're this person. You know, some people call them Jesus freaks, holy rollers, whatever, whatever, persecution, hate, and whatever. But you need to understand, it's you just walked into the newness of life and received true peace and understanding of what it means to have eternal life. You are no longer burdened by the problems of this world, okay? That's what it means to be saved because 1 John makes that very clear as well. Love not the, the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth the way and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. If you accept Jesus Christ into your life and you go back to your old lifestyle, that's not the will of God. Don't you want to seek what the will of God for your life is? Because everyone has a purpose. We are all created with a purpose. We know that in ourselves. But unless you seek Jesus Christ, accept him into your life, and then seek God on what his will for your life is, you will never experience that fulfillment of really living your purpose. I know that I'm doing this by making these videos because it's just what I can do. It's the most I can do because I've received the gift of salvation. Praise God for that. Because that's how much he loves us. While we were yet sinners, Christ still died for us so that we can be forgiven and cleansed by the blood he shed. A righteous, holy man. Jesus Christ had no sin. Could you imagine? Just imagine being a parent. I'm not a parent, but you know, if you're a parent or you have a son... Imagine having the most perfect son you could possibly have who never disobeys you, did everything you asked of him to do, and just grew up being perfect. And he was surrounded by just evildoers. And your son had to pay the price for all those evildoers and die for them and die because of what they did. You would not be okay with that. I would not be okay with that. That just shows you the magnitude of God's love, that he sent his only son to live a perfect life, to be an example, and then to take the penalty of our sins on himself. That's love. That's love, guys. 
That's how you know God loves the world, so that the world through His Son might be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, guys. All you need to do is believe in Him, yes. Believe in Him and repent. See, repentance seems to be so ignored that when it's added on, people will be like, what, what? Repent. I never heard anything about that because nobody reads the Bible. Churches don't like to preach on this subject because when you start telling somebody they have to change their lifestyle in order to be saved, it offends them. Because we've been programmed to believe that sin is just what we have. It's our sin nature, right? People think that living without sin is impossible, but my friends, it is way more than possible. It is amazing and so fulfilling. You experience life, true life. It's like getting a taste of eternal life because you know you're, you're abiding in God's truth and God's will. I mean, oh, it's so amazing, guys. But that's what it means to have true salvation, guys. There's more to just believing in Him, okay? Because you, you understand what the Bible really says, okay? And you really receive more than just accepting Him because the Bible goes on to teach about spiritual gifts, healing in the name of Jesus, casting out demons, okay? You need to understand that there is way more after just accepting Jesus Christ, okay? You accept Him, you're born again, you're a new creation in Christ, praise the Lord. And you really seek out righteousness and you obey Him out of love, guys. We obey Jesus' commandments out of love, okay? It's not a heavy burden, it's not burdensome, as Paul says, it's it's simple, guys. It's simple. It's just we are called to be perfect, for He is perfect. We're called to be holy. We're told to be righteous, guys. This is a new lifestyle, guys. This is this is what it means. And and even in Romans it says um, there's a renewing of the mind that takes place. Let me see if I can find that one. Where is that in Hebrews? Might be in Hebrews. I don't know. But you can look that one up. You can Google that one. Oh, right here, actually. Romans chapter 12, verses 12, verse 2. Verses 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, there needs to be a renewing of the mind, guys. When you really accept Jesus Christ, you look at everything differently. And then you start seeing how Satan works. And you start learning about how the enemy is at work in the lies. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Guys, we don't need to be worrying about the things in the physical. We need to worry about the things in the spiritual. But you will not understand the things in the spiritual realm if you do not have Jesus Christ. It won't happen. Okay? There is so much more after accepting Jesus Christ, guys. You don't want to miss out on it. You don't. You don't. But it's important you understand what it means to really receive true salvation. Because accepting Jesus Christ and going back to your old ways, it's not going to get you to heaven, guys. And I'm saying this out of love because I want you to experience truth. I want you to really experience the Word of God and the power of God. And really experience hearing from Him, knowing you're doing His will, seeking His will. I mean, guys, casting out demons, healing people in the name of Jesus. Guys, it goes on and on. Just look at other videos I've done, but this is where it starts. Salvation is where it starts. Because when you get saved, it's like being born again. You're a new human. You're, everything is new. Your, your outlook on life is new. You have a new sense of peace. Just amazing guys that's why he says you must be born again and get baptized in water and in by the holy spirit baptism guys that's the word of god okay we need to really acknowledge this and and preach this guys this is the gospel that that god loved the world so much he gave us a way to be saved and that way is through jesus christ jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life None come to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, and that means He's the only way to, to heaven, too. It's very clear. So, that's it, guys. Just accept Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins and see what He has for you. Like it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, says, 
we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. All you have to do is ask. Hey, that's not so bad. You don't have to get crucified. Jesus already did that for you. All you have to do is confess your sins. Call out to the Lord. Repent. Save me. It's all you got to do and He will come into your life. Now, it's not going to be an immediate transformation unless you're on fire for the Lord. But, you know, sometimes it takes a couple weeks to get sin out of your life. But like it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Okay, it also says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. The Bible is very clear that we are to no longer continue in sin. God says he hates workers of iniquity. Okay, the reason people take offense to that is because they are workers of iniquity and they don't recognize that the iniquity is something they are doing, not something they are. God hates sin, not the sinner. We need to preach this, okay? That's all. That's all it is, guys. God hates sin, not the sinner. That's why we are called to be righteous and perfect and holy and to walk even as he walked, as Jesus walked. Jesus Christ gave us the example of how we should be, guys. Why are we not striving to do that? It's shocking. But that's it, guys. That's how you receive true salvation. It's a new life. It's a new understanding. It's a new outlook. It's peace. It's knowing you're saved without a doubt. People who think they're saved and are sinners, they know that they like to say I'm saved, but deep down they, they don't they know they're not. Most people say, Well, I hope I'm saved. It's because they're not walking in truth, guys. We are to worship God in spirit and truth because God is a spirit. God is spirit. We are to worship him in spirit and truth. I forget what scripture that is, but you can Google it. We are told to walk in the spirit, and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, as it says in Ephesians or Galatians. I mean Oh man. There's so much more to just accepting Jesus, guys. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize is there is so much more. But if you are continuing in sin, the Bible is very clear about it. The Bible is very clear about it, guys. Fornicators, adulterers, drunkards, liars, revelers, all these things do not inherit the kingdom of God, guys. Why are we not paying any attention to this? Let me see if I can find that real quick. That's in Galatians as well. I mean, idolatry, uncleanness, witchcraft, hatred, envyings, murders, drunkenness, drunkenness. These are things of the flesh, guys, and these things will get you sent to hell if they are not unrepentant. This is why we're this is why Jesus said repent. Because we are to repent and turn away, turn from the wickedness that we once lived in. So that's it, guys video went a little longer than I wanted it to, but you, you guys get the message. You understand. Accept Jesus Christ into your life and then understand what it means for him that he really paid the price. He died for our sins, guys. We all know this, but we need to understand what that really means, okay? And then you need to seek the word of God. As it says in Philippians, guys, we are to seek out our salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus said, if you love him, you will obey his commandments. And they are not burdensome, guys. I'm an example and so are all the other true saints out there. So I hope that video helps, guys. Be blessed in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hit me up with any questions, and I'll talk to you next time.